Today on the Point Blank Performance YouTube channel, fourth and fifth gen Ram owners, we're gonna show you how to install our grid air heater delete. But if you've been shopping with us at pointblankperformance.com, then you know this, this is an intake air spacer plate as we refer to it. Guys on YouTube, we see the comments. You wanna see an install video of this product. You've been buying them. Today is your day. We haven't forgot about you. We're gonna get this bad boy installed. Why? Because you wanna get a product off your truck, the grid air heater that possibly may drop a bolt off in that engine. We're not gonna let it happen. But if it does, it's gonna blow the engine up and you're out a bunch of money. But most importantly, you wanna get this product installed on your truck. Why? Because you wanna save yourself some money. You're the do-it-yourselfer. And I know what you're thinking right now. There is a shitload of parts on my toolbox and there is no way in hell I can get through this install. And yes, you can. There's only a couple bolts standing between me, but you to get that intake air spacer plate installed. Today, you're building with Point Blank Performance. So we got our 22 Ram D'Artagnan. This truck, if you missed it in action on the Mustang Dyno, check out that video here. Before we even dynoed it, we told you guys, we're doing big compounds on it. We're putting some fuel to it. We want big horsepower. But before I do my build, I want you to get yours built with our intake air spacer plate. And that's what we're about to show you guys how to get it done. Now, we've got a bunch of parts laid out. We're gonna go to the truck in a minute. We're gonna put our grid air heater back on the truck. We're gonna show you how to swap it and all the parts in the way to complete this job. First, let's go over the anatomy because we need to know what our plan of action is and ultimately what part is named what. First part that we would take off during this process is what? Our EGR valve, that is here. And it sets on our intake horn. There's only a couple bolts. See these bolts here? There's only a couple 10 millimeter bolts. Next, what's this rubber piece? That is a silencer. You're gonna see that sitting on your fuel rails and it comes out very simple, very easy. We gotta get that out of there. What's it exposed after that? Our fuel lines, that is what these are. How many are there? There's six on the engine and then one that runs down to the actual fuel pump. Seven, seven total lines. Oh shit, it's been a long day. Once we get those lines off, we've got our fuel rail. That is the last piece before we, you, take your grid air heater off, swap it to our intake air spacer plate. Now the build is underway. Before I get this build underway, what tools do I need? Because I know I need a shitload. You don't, guys. Let me roll this out, and you can see. We need starting with our quarter inch. It's got an eight millimeter on it. That is the tool of choice for me. Then when I step up to my 3.8, I've got two different versions. I've got one with a 10 millimeter socket and the other one has a 11 millimeter socket on it. 10s and 11s. Next, I've got a little pick that I like to refer to as a spoon pick. Why? This will help me get the clips off the connectors. What are the other two sockets that I need? We've got a 17 millimeter socket and ultimately, We've got our 15 16 socket. That way we can retort down our connector tubes on the engine. What about the open end wrenches? You're gonna need a 17 millimeter open end wrench, also a 19 millimeter open end wrench. That is all the wrenches you will need to get the job done. Now, we're gonna go underneath the hood of D'Artagnan. We're gonna show you where the factory grid air heater sits. We're gonna swap it out. We're gonna upgrade it to our intake air spacer plate. Then we're gonna start plugging parts back on the build. We're underneath the hood of our 22 Ram. I want you to pop the hood on your Ram. You're gonna see on the driver's side, it's a lot different. It's a complete unit on your truck. Ours is already tore down. Why? Because we're gonna be upgrading our grid air heater. First, we gotta know where it's at. And it's right here on the side of the cylinder head. Perfect, we've located what we're gonna be changing, what we're gonna be upgrading to our intake air spacer plate. Now our truck's tore down, and the reason why is this, we're gonna be going backwards, start putting on every single part to get to the part of your truck, 100% factory. 
So therefore, you can go through this install, have a game plan, and know what to do. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to finish this install. I want you to watch it all the way through. So therefore, when you get ready to start your install, you're ready and prepared. Now we're gonna grab our 10 millimeter wrench and we're gonna remove four bolts that are holding down the factory grid air heater. Mine are already removed. I'm gonna pull it out of there so you can see a close up of those bolts to remove. When we're ready, we're gonna pull our grid air heater out. Be gentle with it, don't get wild. And it's out. Okay, for reference, the four 10 millimeter bolts that need to be removed to get this grid air heater off are located here. Once those have been removed, simply pull out the grid air heater. I want you to make for sure for the next step that you have a metal gasket on your cylinder head here. If you didn't buy one with your kit, your factory one will do. Just inspect it for any kind of cracks. If it does, it will leak. Now, we're ready to install our intake air spacer plate. Simply set it down on top of the gasket, be gentle with it, slide it to the back of the truck, and you will see all the holes line up. Now we're ready to use the supplied four bolts that mount to the cylinder head. Supplied in your intake air spacer plate, I did forget to mention you have four bolts that will be coming with it. You need a M6 Allen wrench. For reference, the four 10 millimeter bolts that we just removed, put these in those locations. To speed up this install, all we're gonna do is simply set ours in place and not torque it down. After we do that, we're ready for the next step. Once you get the four Allen head bolts torqued down and tightened up, we wanna double check something. What is it? This is called a connector tube nut. There is six of them. Where is it located at? On the side of the cylinder head. The job of it is this, to keep the fuel tube secured to the injector so therefore high pressure fuel can get to it. What am I getting at? I want you to make for sure that when those lines got loosened up by me, that they do not untorque themselves. This is where you grab your 15 sixteenths socket. You're gonna go through. They're torqued at 37 feet pound. How much is that? A good torque. Just give it a good yank. You don't have to try to break it off in there. I personally torque them to 42 feet pound. Once those are done, all six locations. If not, you will have a high pressure fueling problem. So make for sure to tighten all of them up. Now we're going through our install, speeding it up so it doesn't take two hours. We're ready for the next step. And the next step is this. We want to put our fuel rail on top there, but we need to make for sure that our banjo bolt that goes on the back of the return, we have a washer on top and a washer on bottom. Let's take a closer look. So we're ready for the next step to place our fuel rail. Ours has been taking off, so now we're putting it back on. What I want you to pay close attention to is this. This is called a banjo bolt. There is a washer, a metal one on top of it, and there's a washer I'm holding here by itself. Now, if you do not put these back in there, fuel is gonna go everywhere. If you take a close look back at the engine, that is where the eyelet is. The banjo bolt will go through it. We're gonna lay this on top of it. We're gonna push our banjo bolt through the top of the eyelet down to here. But where does this little gasket go? Right here. So before you actually bolt this down, slide it in between the eyelet and the banjo bolt and go ahead and crank the banjo bolt down. So now, how do we get this connector off at the very, very back? That's where this little spoon fork is. Don't battle it, don't try to beat it off there, don't try to break it. If you're at the back of the engine, you're gonna take your little spoon fork, I'm doing it blind, I'm gonna push it right here, I'm gonna barely pull back, that'll release the tab when it does that. I'm gonna reach my hand underneath here and I'm gonna pull down. That's how you get the fuel rail out there. Now we're ready to put our fuel rail inside the truck. The easy part is this, hooking up the electronics to the back. This is called a fuel pressure regulator. The electronics will only fit one way, so again, don't try to snap it off in there. Let's slide this bad boy into the truck. This, you kinda of gotta push it in turn it to the right and then dive it down not a big deal don't get rough with it don't try to break it 
going in, boys. So I've got it tilted to the right a little bit. We're halfway in. I'm watching it. I'm going to dive it underneath the eyelet. As soon as I dive it underneath, I'm going to turn it back to my left. Once I turn it back to the left, I'm going to talk to God just a little bit. And we are... We are... Right there. Tilt it up just a hair. Rotate it left. Once I rotate it left, don't get rough with it. And we are down. Set it on top of the little risers. We're ready for the next step, boys. Now we've got to take our banjo bolt, put it through the eyelet, and then put our washer in between the fuel rail and eyelet. Look at my pick. Take a closer look here. You're going to see. I'm going to tap where this bottom O-ring will go. Right down here. You'll see I'm tapping at it. After you put your bolt through, you're going to barely raise it up a little bit, and you're going to push that washer through. Guys, it looks overwhelming, but literally, we're a couple of fuel lines away and an intake horn from having this thing all back together. It just looks overwhelming. Before we move on to the fuel lines, we need to secure the fuel rail down through the intake air spacer plate onto the cylinder head. There are four remaining locations to put the four factory bolts back through. They will drop through simply through the fuel rail onto the plate. This is where you use your 10 millimeter socket, bolt all four of the bolts down, get them tight, we move on to the next step, and that is the fuel lines to the fuel rail. Now we're ready to install our fuel injector lines. I'm gonna be starting at cylinder six, all the way towards the back. And when I put a line on, I will be torquing it down at the cylinder head at the fuel rail, because once you lay all those lines in there, you're not gonna be able to get to every single line. So when you lay a line on, torque it down, make for sure it's tight. When you start tearing yours down, you will start at cylinder one, the very front cylinder. Take off that line, go to cylinder two, then go all the way up to cylinder six. Make for sure, don't just turn off your truck, go cracking lines. They can handle up to 25,000 pounds of pressure. Make for sure the truck's been sitting for 20, 30 minutes, then continue the install. Let's get these fuel lines installed on our truck. So we started at the back at cylinder six. We went from six, five, four, three, two, one. Put all of our injector lines on and torqued them down, right? With our 19 millimeter open end wrench. You're starting your install. So you start at the front, taking off the first injector line at the connector tube, then at the fuel rail. Once it's loose, you can take that line off, set it to the side, and then move on to cylinder two, three, four, five, six. But there's a seventh one. The seventh one is the one over here to the side where my finger's pointing, and it runs down to the high pressure fuel pump. So now we're gonna grab our seventh line. We're two nuts away from getting it tight and having fuel to the rail. We've got our seventh hard line on. It goes from our fuel rail down to our high pressure fuel pump. Now our line's already drained. We've already tightened it up. Everything's fine. But if you're doing your install, you're gonna be taking it off. There's gonna be fuel in there. You're gonna be using your 19 millimeter open end wrench. Get a towel, place it underneath the line, and then remove it. We're almost done with our installation. We're gonna grab our intake horn and get it put on. So we're putting our truck back together. We're finishing up the fuel lines. We took our 19 millimeter open end wrench. All those high pressure fuel lines, they're good and torqued down. 
but you look at your truck because you're beginning your intake air spacer plate installation you're looking for those lines and you can't find them why can't you find them because there is a plastic rubber molding that is covering them up we've got to get that out of there so therefore we can get to our lines okay what's the approach look at the middle of the engine that's called the valve cover directly to the right side of the valve cover you're going to see these little crankcase breather points the same 19 millimeter wrench that you're going to take your injector lines off we are now going to take ours off there we're doing this on the table so you can see up close and personal once these are loosened you can take them move them to the side once they're to the side do not throw them away but what you can throw away is the part that you're going to remove this silencer you do not need a silencer on the fuel injector lines if so don't buy a diesel okay you've got a connector here make sure you get that out of there this is on top of the fuel lines be gentle with it do not try to break any of the wires pull this up pull it out recycle it whatever you want to do but get it out of there we are showing you our approach of if you're doing the installation for the intake air spacer plate but now we're going back together we're almost down to our final step let's take a look at our intake horn now we're down to our two final pieces before we've got our installation complete on our intake air spacer plate we briefly touched on our intake horn i want to go over a few anatomy parts of this that way you're prepared but first off on the bench how does this look when it's assembled because we're going to go to the truck and we're going to hand tight put everything on we're going to finish the installation this is the egr valve it sits on top of the intake horn it has four 10 millimeter bolts that attaches it to the intake horn also do you see these little gaskets right here make for sure those gaskets go back on if you're putting this egr valve on your truck okay now focus on the actual intake horn there's a connector here what is that called map sensor manifold absolute pressure the boost sensor make for sure you do not damage that sensor we're going to get that unplugged ours we're going to plug it back up underneath here what is that listen to this that's the throttle valve okay that's got to be unplugged as well so when we go to the truck we're going to plug that back up we're going to plug our map sensor back up so we have boost pressure we are going to make for sure that our metal gasket which sits underneath our intake horn goes to our intake air spacer plate if not you will have a leak okay now down to the bolting side of things one two three four five six six ten millimeter bolts secure this down onto the plate so what do you need to start this installation or we're putting ours back together i need a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench i need a 11 millimeter why because the 11 will tighten up the boot that goes onto the intake horn also the 11 will work for the nuts on the v-bands that secure the v-band to the egr cooler now to make all this make sense let's go to the truck and install our last parts now we're ready to put our intake horn onto our intake air spacer plate because we're completing our installation you're getting ready to take yours off it's the same procedure one key note is this the 10 millimeter bolts that come out of here you're going to reuse if you're using your factory intake horn therefore place them somewhere where you know where they're at now, how do we get this thing back in or how do you take yours out simply there's two things we're going to slide it down here into its factory location into the factory boot slide it into the boot pivot it over to the intake air spacer plate set it into the factory bolt holes now one thing you got to remember is this we talked about that metal gasket it needs to go in between the intake horn and the spacer plate if you don't have that in there you will have a boost leak boost leak means no power everybody's mad now let's bolt this thing down hand tight for us for you torque it down or if you're starting your installation take your bolts put them over here to the side
We're almost done with our intake air spacer plate installation, but you're just about to begin it. This is the final piece. What is this? The EGR valve. We're gonna show you guys where it goes, so that way when you start your installation, you know what the first piece that comes off. Now, if you're taking this off and you're gonna put it back on, what do we wanna remember? Keep the four bolts that come out of the EGR valve. There are two gaskets that sit on top of it over here. This is the hot pipe. This is hot. So if you're starting to work on your truck, you just got done running it, don't start on it because it's going to be hot as hell. There is a V-band gasket that'll come off, a metal gasket, and a T-bolt with a nut on the end that will come off. Keep up with all that. Now, let's put it back onto its factory locations before you begin your installation. For us, step one is put our V-band back on. How do we do that? Simply take the V-band, flip it up just like this, insert it over the top, and then we're gonna spread it apart, and it simply slides on there. Now, our metal gasket, we've gotta have that. Take it, set it inside the channel of the V-band. Once it's in there, it's not coming out, but just make for sure it's there. All right, we're almost done. We're gonna take our crossover pipe and we're gonna apply it right here to the inside of it. See that? We're gonna take the V-band, we're gonna grip it around, because all it is is teeth. See how it slides in there? Now, we're going to twist over the EGR valve Therefore, it will mate onto the intake horn. Move the full dipstick out of the way. Once you do that, everything will fit just perfectly fine. This, you'll adjust just a little bit, so that way that mouth lines up perfectly. Take your T-bolt here, get the nut off of it. This is 11 millimeter nut, by the way. Slide it through the nose of the V-band then slide it onto the channel of the V-band. Tighten it up with your finger. After you've done that, there are four bolts, 10 millimeter bolts that go through the EGR valve. We're gonna drop ours in, hand tight only for us, but you guys torque them down because we're doing this for only for reference. Our gaskets for sure are underneath it. Therefore, we can't have any leaks and now our installation of our intake air spacer plate is completed you're ready to start yours so we've completed our billet intake air spacer plate on our 22 dodge ram that means you're getting ready to start your installation on your fourth gen dodge cummins or your fifth gen you'll notice this when you look at your factory grid air heater we did not put the electrical back up to it. The factory one has a little 10 millimeter nut here. You need to make for sure, do not leave that on the truck. When you turn on the key, it energizes it. Follow the line down to the relay, get it off the truck. Now, you're ready to begin. One thing that I left out to the very last is this. This is called an intake air temp sensor. I always put this sensor in last, because I don't want you to think, oh shit, I've completely done my installation. I've got to tear it all back down. You don't have to. You can remove this. You can drop it in the hole. Key notes is this. Fifth gen Dodge Cummins, the electrical will plug right up to it. We move it over here. Fourth gen, make for sure you email us. Hey, I'm putting it on a fourth gen. We'll get you the extension harness for it. So therefore, you can complete your installation. Guys, you got a fourth gen, fifth gen, you've put one of our billet intake air spacer plates on. You have any kind of information, any kind of comments about your install or getting ready to do it, make for sure, drop us a comment. I may have left something out that you find crucial for your installation. We appreciate you watching today. Like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time here at Point Blank Performance.